want to tell you a story of the old days, when people were different from now. As you know, we Eskimos are great seal hunters. In the past, the seal gave to us most of what we needed to live through the long winter. From the seal, we had oil for cooking. His meat fed us, and his skin made warm clothes to cover our bodies. It would take a long time to tell about all the wealth, all the useful things we received from Netzerk. Truly, he is our greatest friend, and without him we would all perish. There are terrible stories I could tell of such bad times, of the killing of dogs and the death from hunger of our children. Our land is beautiful, but it is also harsh in winter, and without Netzerk the seal, life for the Eskimo in far-off times was not possible. I remember a long time ago when I was a young boy. The winter had been long and seals were not plentiful. But one day my father returned from the hunt with a good big seal, the first in many weeks. I remember how happy we were as we saw him from a long way off, pulling the seal across the snow. My father made a song about those far off times, and this song I still remember. I walked on the ice of the sea. All was lonely, all was quiet. I heard only the sighing of the wind as I walked on the ice of the sea. I walked on the ice of the sea. Seal were blowing at the blowholes. With joy I felt the harpoon strike. Now I bring you a gift from the depths of the sea. My father was a great hunter of Netzerk. I live through him and see because of his eyes. I grew up to tread the same path, and in my time I have killed many seals. But it was my father who taught me the secrets of Netzerk. He taught me how to use dogs to find the blowholes. He told me that Netzerk was a creature of silence, that he could hear the slightest noise. Netzerk can hear a flea jumping on a dog's back, he said. Of course, he was joking, but at the time, I almost believed him. I remember thinking that if Netzer could hear one flea, then our dogs, who had many fleas, would surely drive him away. A seal must come up through the ice to breathe, or he will drown. When the snow is deep, his breathing holes are hidden from the eyes of the hunter but not from the sharp nose of a good Eskimo dog. Beneath the deep silence of winter snow, a seal will come up through the ice, and the dogs will tell the hunter where the blowhole is. In those far-off days, my father made many poems, and some he gave to me. He said, If the sea goddess gives the hunter one of her creatures, let the hunter be thankful, and his mouth blow a song in her honor. All creatures of the deep belong to Sedna the sea goddess. She is jealous for them. She will give up her children only to a skillful hunter. Only to the hunter who is clever will she give up her children. In times of her anger, there is famine in the land. But in times of her friendship, there is seal meat for everyone.
There are dangers in the Arctic, even for the hardy Eskimo. My mother and her sisters would say nothing, but I remember even as a child waiting for my father and how anxiously the women searched with their eyes for the first sign of a returning hunter. A sudden gale or blizzard, an open crevice in the ice, an ice flow splitting up without warning, all these bad things can happen and send an Eskimo to his death. Our history is full of such tragedies. But when the hunters returned, there was much rejoicing. Now the great hunger was over and the cooking pots would boil again. families share in the good fortune of the hunter. My father's igloo became a meeting place after the hunt, and my mother gave to each person a fair share of the seal. A visitor would stand by the entrance and call out, Hereby somebody comes visiting. And the visitor was then made welcome. My father was a good host. He took pride in saving the best pieces of meat for his friends, and no one in need left our igloo empty-handed. My father said, If the sea goddess gives the hunter a seal, let the hunter be thankful. Let the hunter honor the memory of Netzerk. Come to my igloo and share with me the bounty of Sedna the sea goddess. Come to my igloo and feast with me. The oil under the pot burns brightly. Let the children sleep with full bellies. With the return of warmer weather, Netzerk will leave the water and bask on the open ice. The hunters will then look for his dark shape. Sometimes they will probe the snow for his blowholes and wait patiently nearby for him to appear. Now is the time for the hunter to think like Netzerk, to have thoughts in his head like the thoughts of a seal. My father told me once about a very big seal who always managed to elude the harpoon. His tough old skin was said to be covered with scars from the many wounds he had received in his long life. Said my father, I do not know how true this is or whether such a seal ever lived, but one thing I can be sure of. I remember once trying to harpoon a certain big seal. It happened a long time ago. I had climbed to the top of a snow hill and looked over the frozen sea. I noticed a seal on the ice, a big one. Carefully, I watched him. Every now and then, he would raise his head to make sure that no danger threatened. Then he would sleep for a little while. This was a fine big seal, full of good meat and oil. As I told you, a hunter must think like a seal. A seal has poor eyesight, but if the upright shape of a man comes toward him, the seal will slide quickly into the water and the hunter will go hungry. You must act like a seal. You must pretend to grow flippers and a tail. You must raise your head and look about, then pretend to sleep. All these tricks I used as I crept closer and closer to Netzerk.
but see only my brother. Do not leave me. I come closer and closer to you. Like a seal, I raise my head. Do not be alarmed. At this moment, I am your brother. Do not be afraid as I come to you. Do not leave me. At this moment, I am Netzerk. Do not leave me. Do not slide quickly into the water. Do not be afraid as I come to you. Do not leave me. Quietly, silently, I come to you. But when I struck with the harpoon, I missed. Netzerk was too quick for me and vanished into the sea. But he came up to breathe again in another place not far away. I struck quickly. This time I had him. was large and strong as a bear. He tried hard to free himself, but I was strong too and managed to pull him out. Alas, with a sudden twist he tore himself free. Down he slid into the water. I saw the scars on his body and knew well enough who he was. Mine was not the first harpoon to fail. I never saw him again nor did I ever hear of him being caught. The next day, I killed a different seal. He was smaller, but he was fat enough, and in the evening, I invited my friends to share the feast. And that is the way we used to live. 